Hi friends, I wanted to share some thoughts today about the parable of the wheat and the tares from Matthew 13. And it's a well-known parable and straightforward enough, but the message is often kind of lost in the details. Um, so in the parable, the landowner has his servants plant seed in his, um, in his field. And as it starts to come up, they realize that there are weeds or tares among the wheat the wheat that's growing and uh, the servants ask him if they should tear up the tares or, or pull up the weeds and he says no because uh, you'll damage the wheat in the process and and then so in the explanation the wheat as he's explaining it to his to his disciples down in chapter or in verse 36 the wheat is actually the sons of the kingdom, and that's a that's a phrase like uh, in Luke he uses the phrase "sons of the resurrection," or in the Talmud they use the phrase the "sons of the coming world" or the coming age, and um, and then the other they're the sons of the of the evil one because it, the it, the seed that was uh, planted was done by the devil, who's the adversary. And so the message of this parable is twofold. It's very straightforward, but it's actually very confrontational, especially in Jesus' own setting. So the first message is confrontational, and the second one is an exhortation. It's actually an encouragement. And the first one, um, chapter 13 follows on the heels of chapter 12, and there was an intense confrontation with some of the Pharisees there. And... Uh, and so a lot of these are actually directed at angry and and not all Pharisees, mind you, but angry and unrepentant Pharisees. And uh, Pharisee group at this time was was very vulnerable to, or at least sympathetic at times to zealot ideology. In fact, the zealot movement uh, was really birthed out of the Pharisee movement around this period. And it was kind of a split off. And they, they each had different ways of viewing how they were going to establish the kingdom of God and and uh, bring the redemption themselves or kind of um, aid God in, in establishing the redemption. But nonetheless, they still had a similar view, at least similar enough to 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 walk together at times. But the first message that's a real confrontation for Jesus' audience is that this age is not about weed pulling for the sons of the kingdom. And this is one that's obviously very pertinent to us. It's um, everywhere you look, it, there's an argument that, that this age for Jesus' disciples, that Christians should be about the purging of the earth from wickedness. And, uh, and this is the first thing that Jesus is confronting. That's not what this age is about. A uh, Bible teacher um, who passed away this this last year named David Pawson in, in England used to read this passage and say, Jesus' disciples ought not be about the task of weed pulling. And this is the first confrontational message of it, is that the sons of the kingdom of God need not concern themselves with the pulling up of weeds because that's not what God is concerned about right now. And if we and if we play this out, the the fact is, is that God is about actually taking wicked men and offering them an opportunity to repent, because He takes no delight in their death, much less eternal death and eternal punishment. And and so the 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 fact is is that God is restraining from weed pulling Himself, and so His disciples ought to be doing the same. And that's the first confrontation. The And the encouragement that he offers at the end is that it's not going to go unchecked forever. Wickedness, because that's the, that's the sting of it. It's not that his immediate audience, they just were very hateful of people that weren't like them. It's that the sting is, is that evil people do evil things. And eventually, evil things don't just stay in one's... Uh, they don't only just hurt the individual, they actually hurt the collective, they hurt the whole. And so where there is wickedness and evil, eventually it hurts people and it actually causes real injustice. Um, and so Jesus 
you know, gives the exhortation at the end and he says, listen, it's not going to go on forever. When the son of man comes, he will send forth his angel. They, he will gather out of his kingdom all of the stumbling blocks, all of those who committed lawlessness, and he will throw them into a furnace of fire. In that place, they'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has the ears, let him hear. And the point is, is that wickedness will not go on unchecked forever. God has appointed a day for its end. But in light of that, keep in mind, keep in tension the fact that wickedness is unchecked right now for two reasons. One, because God loves the offender. Because God loves the wicked man and he takes no delight in their death. He loves his creation and he wants all men to repent. And number two, where there are challenging and unjust circumstances, it actually tests the sincerity and the faith of godly men. And God has ordained both of those things. Don't forget, you can see both of these things in action when Jesus sends out the apostles, um, both in Matthew and in Luke. But in Luke, the version in Luke, he tells them that he will send them out as sheep among wolves and then Later on in the passage, he tells them that he will send them to stand before kings and rulers as a testimony to them. But the whole frame, the whole context leading up to that is when they go before kings and rulers, it will be, they will go imprisoned like Paul and the other apostles did. And so what Jesus is telling them is part of the sending is God so loved the wicked rulers of the earth, that he sends his beloved disciples to them, even in chains, possibly just before their execution, as a witness and testimony to these wicked rulers that they might turn and not inherit eternal punishment. So, number one, we're not into weed pulling because God loves the perpetrator. And number two, is God sends his beloved disciple there because it actually tests the sincerity of their faith when they see injustice and they experience it, and yet they can entrust vindication to God. So I think that is a straightforward message of the wheat and the tares, and I hope that is encouraging. If you have any questions, you can always leave me questions wherever you see the, uh, wherever you see the video posted. So Lord be with you guys.